PCB plastics, plastic cups. The plastic circular economy in Portugal, uh, sustainable vision is the topic of the next talk, which will be presented from Portugal by Nuno Aguiar, technical director of the Portuguese Association of the Plastic Industry. Good afternoon and welcome, Nuno. Good afternoon. Thank you, Patricia, for granting us this opportunity. It is a great opportunity to talk to our next of kin country. And it is a great honor to be able to participate. And I would like to thank you for the invitation to talk about circular economy of plastics in Portugal. And at the same time, share what uh, has contributed with APIPI and other actions that the Portuguese uh, plastic industry understands as necessary for us to move forward in the circular economy and plastic sustainability. For those who don't know us, APIPI in Portugal is the Portugal section of the plastic industry and in a, in a nonprofit organization. It has around 45 years of existence and activities. And obviously, it represents an entire sector in its various applications, including packaging, automotive sector, electronics, subsectors like medicine and uh, various sectors that are centralized and represented in our association. In global terms, just for you to have a general macro idea, this uh, sector in Portugal is represented by about 1,000 companies and has around 24,000 workers. And in terms of business volume, it's around 5 billion euros or 25 billion euros. So the GDP of Portugal, it represents around 2.5%. Speaking of my talk now specifically, it is centered or focused on five concrete points. The first point, which has to do with the European strategy and European policies for a circular economy of plastic. A second point has to do with what has been done at a Portuguese level regarding this uh, same uh, circular economy. Third, the development of a strategy of our association to fulfill with the objectives of a circular economy. And the fourth point, a new approach that we wanted to share in this Congress, which has to do with uh, uh, the uh, planetary health and then some final considerations. The European strategy, what has been done in at the level of policies in the European Union? today reduced to 27 countries. The, uh, in uh, January 2020, we had the Brexit process. So these 27 countries have a set of policies of regulatory initiatives to be applied in each member state, including, of course, Portugal. It's important to say that the main landmarks are considered here. The first has to do with the package of circular economy. We already had an introduction to these issues. We also have the European Union strategy for plastics, and this resulted likewise in the revision of the waste legislation, which generated some guidelines, which later will be discussed. And 
it also addressed circular economy, which wanted to improve uh, plastic waste management and improve the collection systems and uh, selection and promote recycling, decrease or minimize the waste or pollution of plastic waste to the marine environment and other actions. A second point in 2019, we had the single use plastic directives, which is being widely discussed in all countries and the ecologic pact, the so-called Green Deal, which winds up being Neutr uh, carbon neutrality of the European Union until 2050, where we have several actions in several areas and sectors. More recently, in 2020, we have the new plan for circular economy actions in Europe, where in some way we focus on certain specific sectors which we will discuss further on. And we want to increase the circularity of products. At a European level, currently Portugal is the presidency of the European Union Council before it was Germany and then Slovenia. So we are in the last month of the Portugal, Portuguese presidency. Therefore, this program focused on a fair recovery and digital recovery of Europe. The main lines of action are exactly these. Greener Europe, more digital Europe, more social, and more global. Obviously, within these five lines of action, I chose the first two because in some way, they have greater impacts and regulations and relationships with the plastic industry. Regarding more resilient Europe, this has to do with what we so call the budget, the long-term budget from 21 to 27. So both of the European Union and there is a mechanism for self-resources. And these self-resources is where we translate the tax over plastic. This was already discussed previously and this will have to do with the amount of plastic packaging that is not recycled. On the other hand, at the Green Europe level, we have the European Ecological Pact, which focuses on having a carbon neutral Europe in 2050, thereby facilitating all policies and all products so as to minimize carbon emissions to the atmosphere. At this level, in April of this year, we achieved an agreement at the European Committee level, which is the so-called climate law of the European Union. It is implicit here that in 2050, Europe will be carbon neutral. And in 2030, there is also a commitment to reduce around 55% these same emissions based on the reference value of 1990. Parallel to this, the new action plan for the circular economy and the directives in other words, all the regulatory framework of Europe, which has been revised, will create new challenges for our industries, mainly for plastic. In this 
concrete example, speaking of directives, we show here a brief summary of the main ones under discussion now. And uh, we have the uh, waste directives, which uh, sets the general principles for waste management, the hierarchy of waste management, setting new goals for urban waste, and will force countries to implement selective collection until 2023 for organics, hazardous materials produced in households until 2025. On the other hand, we also have the directives for packaging waste. Here we establish new recycling goals. Uh, Guido mentioned this morning in the specific case of plastic that we will have to recycle around 50 percent until 2025 and 55% until 2030. So we can imagine that in fact, this is still very ambitious for us to achieve this goal, achieving the reference values. And in Portugal, the last data show that we are at 35% at of packaging recycling. We also have the uh, directive for end of life vehicles and electronic waste and potential restrictions and some substances. We also have the directives for landfills. They set a very ambitious goal for 2035. This has to do with just depositing 10% of waste in landfills and also the SUP, which is more recent and needs to be transposed to the various uh, member states until July 2nd, 2021. And this will consist of a series of prohibitions, restrictions, reduction, markups, and content of uh, recycled material, pet bottles, etc. And in this case, this has to do with certain timings in terms of uh, selective collection for pet. In 2025, they need to collect 77%, and by 2030, we need to collect 90%. 25% in 2025, and 30%. We'll have 25% by 2025 and 30% by 2030. So in the regulatory aspect, there's a lot of information, many objectives, and this will naturally force countries to make all efforts and industries adapt themselves. Let's now speak of a new action plan for circular economy that was launched in March 2020, which has these four pillars, a policy for more sustainable products. This has to do with the eco design of the products. So promote improvements of them for recyclability, facilitate its recycling. And on the other hand, provide information to consumers. In, in other words, the, uh, the, the so-called greenwashing so that you don't uh, omit this information and also participate in the productive processes. More and more companies are adopting circularity as something in their processes. We also have here the key areas that this uh, program will insert, which has to do with uh, electronic appliances, batteries, vehicles, specifically in packaging and more specifically speaking of plastic and plastic they have all the issues that allow for circularity the incorporation of plastic materials the optimization of products promote the reuse thereof minimize waste 
So everything that has to do with the basic concepts of minimizing or eliminating waste and pollution and promoting circularity of materials. In other words, when it becomes waste, it should be reincorporated by means of products. We also have the pillar of less waste, more value. This specifically has to do with uh, prevention and the circularity. Increase circularity by minimizing toxic substances in the environment and creating a market for secondary raw materials for recycled products. And we can just talk about circularity if there is a mature market of uh, recycled raw materials. If you can't recycle, all circularity is jeopardized and also reduce export of waste from the European Union to third country, th third party countries. This allowed us to increase the European Union is capable of treating its own waste. So it has recycling structures that are quite evolved technologically that allow for this recycling. Uh, other transverse uh, actions, we have the issue of circularity, sustainability of products for carbon neutral neutrality. And we also have the digitization, innovation, and investigation. This is very important if we want to move forward to new products. So only in this way we will be able to reach this objective. Very quickly, just because this is something new. In the sustainability policies, it is foreseen to have the product digital passport. With this passport, by means of a QR code, it can contain a large amount of information throughout the product chain. Since it's production used by the end consumer, and this will allow to provide a set of information that will be useful to each different player in the chain and also to the consumer. All issues related to what we have defended regarding information, what is the product sustainability, and later I'll ex better explain this. We believe that it is very important, and this could be the vehicle that allows consumers to have the possibility to make more sustainable choices that are more rational. This is the digital product passport, which can be applied to several products. But during an initial phase, it will be allocated to products that are considered as consuming more resources and energy. Some of the advantages that this digital passport will offer will tell consumers and to all chain links that somehow are connected to the production, sales, or distribution of these products. And this will allow companies to choose to be transparent with the information and provide the same information and thereby benefit by this action. In the end, we want these products to contribute towards sustainability of the European Union in terms of the market overall. So how is Portugal implementing this uh, European Union strategy? 
this strategy is in line within the European policies. They have been adopted by Portugal. We establish an action plan for the circular economy. And we defined here key areas as to production. It starts there, then it crosses consumption, management, secondary raw material, and finally investment and innovation. And here we must consider the key areas for the circular economy. What was defined as key areas? The first point is to design, repair, and reuse. So based on the eco concession, we ask that products can be reused, repaired, and facilitate by means of the recyclability their final destination and use in the future. We also have the broader responsibility of the producer for the same products that are placed in the market. We also need to encourage the circular market by means of possible bonuses. So products that may come about and are considered more sustainable, obviously this will be linked to education of a circular economy because more and more consumers need to be motivated to consume in a responsible sustainable and uh, uh, consumption on the other hand we need to feed without waste we talked about the food waste one of the greatest problems that we face today in our world, around one third is considered to go to waste. But besides this, there is other data that says that due to the populational increase, we need to increase production over the next 30 years by 70%. Therefore, we need to see that plastic packaging, which were widely discussed today, they have uh, an important role to perform with regard to food waste. For the plastic industry, waste was always seen as a resource. So we're talking about industrial waste, primary recycling, but also for the last 20 years, we have the post-consumption waste. Today, we talked a lot about flexible packaging. We in Portugal have, in fact, the capacity to recycle uh, flexible packaging. And for many years, for around 20 years, we can be proud that we have recycling companies that are widely equipped for this. In they are updated in terms of technology. Many other companies in Europe and other parts of the world. So waste is seen as raw materials. And that's the only way it makes sense to think about a circular economy. So we see the need to create a market for secondary raw materials. It may not exist. There's a concrete case that the available raw materials are not enough. There's uh, recycled petro, and so the cost recycled is higher than virgin raw materials. So there's this inversion, which is the result of market, uh, the laws of supply and demand. So we need to consider all the requirements and the percentages of recycled products. We need to make sure that this market uh, exists and that companies can buy them from the market. Then we 
have water resources and nutrients so uh, and water efficiency and all the issues around nutrients and then investigation and innovation which is also very important if we want to be in a circular economy we need to develop new materials new products a wide range of action actions need to be taken we need to think if we want to think about a circular economy and of all regulatory areas that we see we have these three points both uh, in europe and also in portugal first tax on plastic it's, it's not expected to have this uh, tax on materials in portugal just on takeaway packaging that's where tax is levied as of 2022 and then we have the directive of the plastics single-use plastic directive so uh we have until july 3rd 2021 this has to be we have a public consultation or public hearing and all stakeholders can contribute and then all these directives have been now part of portuguese law and this means a whole set of contacts with all stakeholders including the government the idea is to try to contribute positively to this discussion and uh, as a result of all these issues both uh, regulatory and also circular economy the apep developed its own ecological pact and in this case uh, we expressed our views on plastic sustainability uh, from a circular economy perspective in portugal so this is our position we have been putting this into practice with all organizations with which we relate and this is exactly what we do we have to work in integrated fashion collaboratively with all stakeholders so that we see everyone's perspectives we bring all these views together to define our uh, trajectory or our development so that we have more sustainable products these are our uh, lines of action that we consider essential to perform thorough holistic studies as we see in, in the, their life cycles like with paper cups that are now uh, made of plastic with more sustainable products and this is a complex material so a multi-material would replace a material that's a hundred percent recyclable plastic that's the new option and and this is what we need to avoid is emulsion in these lines of action whenever we want to change whenever we want to transform something we need to ensure that we have a scientific foundation scientific evidence in addition development and adoption of an ecological efficiency label for our products we believe that consumers need the information that they need to be able to choose what product they believe is more are, are more sustainable for example the carbon footprint might be something to be implemented and uh, at the european level there is work that is defined by the product environment footprint bf so you consider the environmental footprint of products and these studies can be used to this end in addition we also need a vision and improvement of 
the current systems in sorting, collection, and uh, separation, uh, sorting, recycling, uh, and uh, valuing also. In Europe, we have different colors for different products. We want all citizens to be able to sort their waste. So there should be a standard, the same colors in Portugal and Spain and France. We need to have the same codes or where our waste should be, how our waste should be disposed of. And then you have environmental, uh, the environment, it needs to be considered, it's crucial. And this needs to be uh, worked on constantly. Consumers are the driving force that will put into practice the circular economy principles. They may make, no matter how sustainable the packaging that they, that the industry makes, if consumers don't do their job, it will be pointless. And then funding for industrialization and research and development with the pandemic, it will show how Europe needed uh, Asian countries. It depended on Asian countries. And this is something that needs to be taken into account and improved in the future. And research and development is crucial to this end. In this, uh, considering this situation, APIP set a had a set of initiatives. It was a it signed up the circular alliance of plastics to promote circularity of plastics, with the goal to incorporate 10 million tons in 2025 by 2025. And this was signed in September 2019. In parallel, a few days later, the people held its plastic summit, an annual event, and we signed the pact of the industry of plastics, the Portuguese industry of plastics, which was supported by the government ministry of the economy and the environment. And finally, a people what APIP did in February 2020, it is now a member of the Brazilian, oh, sorry, the Brazilian or the Portuguese uh, plastic uh, pact, which is uh, de developed by the Alan MacArthur Foundation. So we want to collaborate actively in this respect. So with the pact in our industry, these are the major actions that were taken, that are still being taken and followed up on. We have our Pro Operation Clean Sweep program. That's an international program aiming at preventing the leakage of pellets to the marine environment. And so a peep in Portugal is managing this program. Then the MORE platform, this is an European platform that wants to monitor the amount of plastic and recycled plastic, in fact, that uh, is added to new products. And then the Observatório da Reciclagem do Plástico, that's the uh, monitor of uh, plastic recycling, that's a national uh, institution that measures the amount of waste that is recycled every year. So we have statistics. And finally, to see the uh, numbers of recycled materials that are being used and added to many industrial products. We also have an area for research projects and innovation projects. And as I said before, this is one of the examples, participation in other initiatives and work group, thematic work groups. In terms of, well, we now have examples. We're doing 
working in the sector, plastic sector, in terms of research and development. And within APEP, we, or the Portuguese Association, we mobilize the entire plastic sector for it to participate in this initiative. This initiative aims at creating an innovation ecosystem that leads to better plastics worldwide that can contribute to a circular economy. It involves the entire value chain of this material with over 125 organizations, 25 organizations, including transformers, recyclers, end users, brand owners. So this has a lot to do with our technological centers. So all companies that are part of our value chain, they are represented here. This program takes 36 months. It finishes in June, June 30th, 2023, based on three pillars. Circularity for uh, material design, circularity based on product design. So with these two axes or uh, four fr fronts, they're linked to echo design, improving the echo design of materials and products, promoting options among others. Then we have circularity through recycling. The idea is to innovate and improve in advanced recycling technology, providing greater recycling of materials that are harder to be recycled. And, and also chemical recycling and also paper recycling. And then circularity through alternative raw materials. So we produce raw materials from waste, from organic products from other industries. This is an innovative project. And in terms of investment, the amount is 48.9 million reals. It's funded by Portuguese program, Portugal 2020. And so I'd like to thank also all the alternative product area from Portugal that have provided, have supported this project, which is a, a rather bold and ambitious project that will contribute to the circularity of plastics. As I said before, we also participated in the Al MacArthur Pact, and we, a PIP ha, plays an active role there, coordinates the activities where we have other sector activities it also decisions are made there i will now touch on another topic we discuss the circular economy and sustainability economic and social and environmental issues so there's also health involved all our action needs to be considered consider the environment and this will have an effect on our health and this is what this initiative is the planet health it's about human health it's about well-being and it's also uh, about the health of the environment so if we consider behavioral alterations in which human health and environmental sustainability, they're closely linked. So there's always this close ongoing and contributes to the event and to our health. And uh, human beings, if they're healthy, 
then you're ex you can expect them to have more uh, responsible environmental behavior that's more sustainable. So we need a change in behavior that are highly, but very highly complex. And the idea is that what I can do, and we have a concrete case of uh, a car, for instance, that will generate more emission, will contribute to increased temperatures because of greenhouse gases. In this increased temperature, will have other consequences that will affect everyone ultimately. Moving on to circular to the circular economy, if we really want to reach this goal, we need to change our behavior very soon, immediately, and this is essential to take into account our capability, our knowledge, the way of learning about things like the rules on sorting materials, then opportunity and the means to sort these materials and separate them, and also to take responsible, sustainable action, good environmental action. This means contributing to the environment and everyone will benefit. So uh, within this logic, we wanted to stress this point. Human health, environmental sustainability, these two are closely linked within a greater, broader context of the health of the planet. Finally, and this is something that has been mentioned throughout this Congress, if we really want to reach a circular economy, we need a holistic vision, a global vision, and to work in integration. Otherwise, we won't have a better plastic that's more circular, a more sustainable planet, a healthier planet. And as I've also mentioned, plastic is not a means. It's uh, plastic is a means, a resource. It's not waste. And as human beings, we can change our behavior. It's up to us. And there's something I always discuss about this topic. That there was a writer who said this exactly that garbage in itself does not exist garbage is not an object or a garbage and waste is about a gesture and plastics exactly about this our gesture our behavior in fact everyone may have a different view it doesn't mean it's wrong it just means that we see the world from different perspectives so we can integrate all these perspectives collaboratively, and this may lead us toward something positive that we want from the circular economy, economy of plastics and other materials, uh, taking care of our planet. Thank you for your attention. These are my contact details. Please, uh, I'm a, I'll be available. No, no, Aguiar technical director of the APIP, the Portuguese Association of the Plastics Industry. Thank you so much for participating and contributing. We have some questions, but as we are uh, short of time, we'll address these questions in the debate, okay? At 5 p.m. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you once again. No, no, I should remind you that we have simultaneous translation and you should select the language at the top in the top left corner and then the materials in English and the attendees uh, guide are available on our website if you need information about the awards of the fourth CBP 
uh, you can get that there too. In order to ask questions to the speakers, use the specific sector section for questions at the foot of your transmission.